It's not like terroir and wine, which is which is still very complex. It's still very uh, there's lots of nuances and, and differences. Don't don't let me. I don't want. I don't mean to trivialize that in any way, but we have to go through so many different processes to get the extract out to get those flavors out of the grain and get it into a, a form in which we want to use uh, so there's so many options for us to lose it and so it's it's trying to figure out how not to lose it and how to capture it so i'm pretty sure i just lost whatever question i was going for with my long diatribe we want to prove the tarawa concept in whiskey in ireland widely used in the wine industry in france mark rainey has brought the concept to ireland and now we're looking at barley investigating how Tarawa impacts the growth of barley and the flavours in the finished new mix beard we have here. And we're working with Minch Malt, who grow the barley for us. Dr. Dustin Herb, Oregon State University, who's proven the Tarawa concept already in the beer industry. So he's compiling all the data and he'll write the paper with Dr. Kieran Kilcally and Chagas Research in Fermi. This is Chagas Food Research Centre in Cork. Heretofore, a lot of people thought that the flavour in whiskey you know, was really predominantly the, the maturation process. Flavour is actually a combination of taste and aroma. There's only a finite number of compounds we can taste, but there's thousands of compounds we can smell. So aroma is generally much more complex because there's so many molecules involved in it. Okay, so all this equipment in here allows us to identify volatile compounds. Same sort of equipment you would see in forensic science or drug testing, except that we're using it to determine and identify volatile compounds that are involved in sensory perception. So as I said, it's over two crop years, it's not just one crop year, 2017, 2018. So we've picked two varieties, Laureate and Olympus, and they're each grown at each location. So we've picked a tie in County Kildare and Bunclody in County Wexford. Each location has its own soil type, so soil study was done. It's then harvested, and then it was sent for micro malting and micro distillation. The reason for that is just to ensure that malting doesn't impact on the flavors. Barley flavor is inherent uh, it, it, it is genetic. The genotype, the genes within that can interact with the environment, and the environment is everything that is related to how it's grown. It's the weather, it's the soil, it's everything that has to do with the growing of that, and then that interacts with the genetics. I mean, that's, that's terroir. Harry Rifkin at Tatlock and Thompson did the sensory analysis. So we have all sensory analysis on each of the spirits in two different varieties. The spirit then is sent to Chagas for GC mass spectrometry and GCMO analysis. You know, we could determine if there was uh, an impact of where the barley was grown, which brought in this terroir element. All these compounds that we can smell have unique fingerprints, so it separates the compounds, and then they go into a detector. So we can match those fingerprints to known libraries, and then we can identify them that way. It's a very sensitive technique. When we were picking the two sites, we chose sites that had two very different soil types. Clonroach is one of the more productive soils in Ireland and Elton is kind of quite vast in the Midlands so we have a lot of growers in that terroir. The micro environment had more of an effect than the actual variety itself and as that was kind of the thinking before we done the project we had an inkling um, but we needed to, to prove it out. What does that mean when, when, it, when it hits the lips, when, when it's actually tasted, can you taste the terroir? So you put your sample in here it's picked up by this CTC and it's put into this little incubation agitator. Because the compounds are volatile, we need to really sample the headspace when you can smell them in a gas phase. And that vial is heated in that little uh, unit there and agitated. So it gets the volatiles out of the sample into the headspace. And then that probe that's sticking in there, that probe comes down into the top of that vial and all those volatiles in the headspace absorb onto that probe or that fibre. And that's very delicate, but it's got an absorbent phase on it. And it comes to a point where those volatile compounds separate, and then you get different peaks, which you typically see in a chromatogram. So it separates them all out. So every compound has a unique fingerprint. And then we match that fingerprint with libraries that we have, and that's how we identify what it is. But the real hard part is, is the data processing. All that data then is sent to Dr. Herb in Oregon who analyzes the data. You know, can you take the, the metabolomics and marry it with the sensory and, and devise what exactly ter whiskey terroir is? He looks at also soil analysis from both locations. He looks at the weather patterns in both locations. He looks at the varieties and he looks at then sensory analysis and the GC analysis. And from that then we hope to determine different terroirs in the different locations. When we were able to do the GCO work, 
you know, we will really then be able to focus in on the differences in those compounds that are impacted on sensory perception. It's, it's a multi fruity, floral, grassy, oily, staley, I mean, the list goes on that we can test for. We have all these detectors, mass spec detectors, to, to identify the compounds, right? But you know, in there we use our human noses because even though this stuff is so expensive and so complicated, human noses are still nearly as, as sensitive. Under those descriptors, there is a litany of just uh, different compounds and, 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 and different mechanisms in which have to go into what, what, what that flavor is. That's a sniffing port here, right? Somebody sits here, you have to be trained, we get the product of interest, whatever that means. In this case, it was the raw distilled spirit. They, they get to run a lot of the raw distilled spirit until we're ready to run the whole trials, and then they get, they're very familiar with it. And they smell, as the compounds hit the detector, the flow is split, and one part goes into your nose, and the other part, they can see it on the screen, the pink, and we can identify it. You now we proved that it did have a factor. There was differences between the different varieties of barley, depending on where they were grown, you know, so therefore their, their environment. They knew that anecdotally themselves in Waterford because they could smell differences in the different distillates. And the beauty about Waterford is that Waterford are really the only ones that could do this. Other whiskey producers would, would pool all the different barley from different farms. But because you know, Waterford were able to malt and distill and analyze and produce raw distillate from different farms, then we were able to prove you know, conclusively that there were differences in the abundance of those compounds based on where the barley was grown, as well as the differences in the varieties of the barley. We found some trends, some, some, some significant trends within both the sensory side and the metabolome side that says, you know, that terroir is, it does exist. If I'm drinking whiskey with people, I'm trying to tell them all the boring things that are potentially happening and where some of those flavors are coming to. So. Um, yeah, I know it's made me think an awful lot more about the product. What about the soil? What about the weather climates? What about the timing of each cheese? Uh, what about the pathogens that, that we get on, 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 on the grain? How is that affecting? You know, I can spend my life talking about terroir. Many people have, you know, and we're still just scratching the surface of, 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 of what is there. Uh, and, and so that's what's exciting about this whole project. Yeah, I like whiskey.